Greetings fellow viewers. Today's project is converting a computer power supply which is a 475 watt ATX power supply that I just bought off a local um, computer store here in town and I'm going to make that into a lab power supply which I'm probably going to use to run my Christmas display unit. So basically this is what it looks like from the store. I paid $25 for it. All the uh, various colors and of the wiring are listed here and the, the wattages and voltages are listed. So we're going to open this up and I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, here we are looking at the top of the unit and you'll see that there's four screws on the various corners. Sometimes there's labels over the screws so you can't see them so you have to peel the label away. These labels are meant so that uh, if you take them off they will know that you've been inside the unit and you will not have any warranty so obviously this will void your warranty so if you don't want that then I suggest you don't do this project but anyways I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove those four screws and I'll show you what we're doing next okay here's what it looks like when you open it up next thing you're going to be doing is before you separate all the colors of wires you're going to be looking for uh, there's a green wire in the bundle here and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking the green wire which is basically here and any black wire and you're going to connect those together and what that does is that bypasses the load switch that is in the computer normally this this power supply won't operate unless there's a load on it so the computer when it's in the computer it has a load on it but because it's not in a computer there is no load so what you're going to do is you're going to connect those the green wire to any black wire and that will allow this thing to turn off and on uh, by itself without any load on it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig that green wire out and a black wire. I'll loosely tie those together just to show you and I'll plug it in to prove that it works and then we'll go forward from there. So I'll be back when I dig out that green wire. Okay, here we go. Got a green wire. There's only one. Any black wire, which is any ground. Just loosely connected just to, to show you that it actually works. It will be soldered and shrink wrapped after, but just for demonstration purposes, it's just temporarily connected and you probably can't see it i'm hoping maybe the microphone of this fan will pick it up but the fan is spinning a lot of noise in the background and if i turn it off which i just did you'll see the fan slowing down you see the fan turning on so basically that's the next step so what i like to do is i used to uh, I'll solder those two wires together, the green and black. I'll tidy them up and then I'll put the lid on this and I'll do all the other connections outside and I'll show you that as we go along. Okay, there's the wires soldered together. I always check everything as I go. The fan is still running. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink wrap that tubing. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, there it is, all heated up and sealed. I use a, uh, a heat gun just because I have one but you can use a cigarette lighter or even uh, an old soldering iron any kind of heat source will do I just use this because uh, I do a lot of soldering so I have it on hand so that's the next step and uh, basically for inside you're pretty much done and now what I like to do next is finish up and bundle all the colors of wires together and put it in a, I believe they call it a terminal block I'll, I'll show you my next step so I'm going to put the lid on it and I'll show you where we're going to go from there. Okay, there it is with the lid put back on. The next thing I like to do is I buy one of these, I believe they're called, I don't know, I call them terminal bars. I don't really know what they're called. Anyways, uh, I buy one of these and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight connectors. And what I like to do is I cut these wires here and I fit them to the top of the connectors and it works out exactly one connector has a home for every color so I can have all possible ranges so how I install that is I just use uh, basically sheet metal screws with a nut on the back side and I just use the provided holes there uh, you don't have to do this step it's, this is just optional but this just gives me more ranges if I want to use it for different things so I install this and then I cut these wires next so I'm going to cut the wires and I'll group them together and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here because we don't need that. So I'll be back. Okay, I've cut all the wires and I've bundled them together and the colors that you see before you, as you can see, they're all just kind of 
temporarily zip tied. And what I do is I move those zip ties up and down depending on where I need them to be. So the next, next task will be to cut and fit each of these wires into these little terminal screws so they have power on the top or the bottom, whichever I choose it. And then whatever I'm going to be supplying will come out the other side. So if it's the top, it'll be at the bottom, and the bottom will be at the top, and vice versa, in other words. So basically what I do is I take the length of colors and I cut using these wires, for example, say I was using this purple wire, I would cut and fit the length of wire to the terminal screw. So say I was using that one, I would cut that wire and then I would cut and fit that with a little spade connector, I think they're called. They look like this. So I cut and fit and then I solder and shrink wrap each connector and then they fit like that and I tighten them up. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'm going to take each of the colors, bundling them together, and I'm going to be putting on these little spade connectors and fitting them as I go. So I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. I do have power coming in this unit now, so I could stop at any point and just use it as is also. But I just want to keep it trim and neat and I want to use various different powers, so I'm just going to finish it right up. So I'll show you basically what it looks like when it's all basically ready to go and then we'll do some power checking. Okay, I'll see you in a while. Okay guys, here it is as promised, the completed power supply with all the various colors of wires installed on what I call like a fuse bar, bus bar, or something like that, whatever you want to call that. And the idea is you just tap into whatever screw you want on the bottom to give you the various voltages and the combination you need. So we've got the very first terminal is the brown wire which gives you the voltage of whatever it is, I can't remember now. And you got a purple and a blue, followed by the black, orange, yellow, and red. All the different voltages are usually marked on the power supply as to the color. And if they're not there, you can find them on the internet. This one doesn't seem to have any on there. My purpose is today I'm only interested in the, uh, the black and the yellow, which just gives me 12 volts. So there you go. That's how you do it. Completed project. I hope you enjoyed it, and good luck with building yours.